thank you for joining with me. We are reading A Course in Miracles workbook for students and we are in the final lessons. This holy instant would I give to you, be you in charge, for I would follow you certain that your direction brings me peace. And if I need a word to help me, he will give it to me. If I need a thought, that he will also give. And if I need but stillness and a tranquil, open mind, these are the gifts I will receive of him. He is in charge by my request, and he will hear and answer me, because he speaks for God, my Father, and his Holy Son. And now we will read the commentary. Lesson 364. This is by Alan Watson. I am going to suggest that for the last two days of this year you read through the epilogue following the last lesson as well as the lesson. I will share a few comments based on the epilogue over the, last, over the next two days. All of the course quotes that follow are from the epilogue unless otherwise indicated. However, your practice should still be of the final lesson. And I'm going to pause here and read the epilogue. Epilogue. This course is a beginning, not an end. Footnote 199. The ending of the workbook concludes what we might call the course proper, which consists of the text and the workbook. The manual for teachers is meant first and foremost for those who have completed the course and will now teach it. This course is a beginning, not an end. Your friend goes with you. You are not alone. No one who calls on him can call in vain. Whatever troubles you, be certain that he has the answer and will gladly give it to you if you simply turn to him and ask it of him. He will not withhold all answers that you need for anything that seems to trouble you. He knows the way to solve all problems and resolve all doubts. His certainty is yours. You need but ask it of him, and it will be given you. You are as certain of arriving home as is the pathway of the sun laid down before it rises, after it has set, and in the half-lit hours in between. Indeed, your pathway is more certain still, for it cannot be possible to change the course of those whom God has called to him. Therefore, obey your will and follow him whom you accepted as your voice to speak of what you really want and really need. His is the voice of God and also yours, and thus he speaks of freedom and of truth. No more specific lessons are assigned and there is no more need of them. Henceforth hear but the voice for God and for yourself when you retire from the world to seek reality instead. That's a capital S. He will direct your efforts, telling you exactly what to do, how to direct your mind, and when to come to him in silence, asking for his sure direction and his certain word. Let's go read footnote 200. This means that the Holy Spirit will now direct your practice periods, telling you when to take them and how to direct your mind during them. For more specific instructions on how to practice after the workbook, see section 16 in the Manual for Teachers, How Should the Teacher Spend His Day? His is the word that God has given you. His is the word you choose to be your own. And now I place you in his hands to be his faithful followers, with him as guide through every difficulty and all pain that you may think is real. Nor will he give you pleasures that will pass away, for he gives only the eternal and the good. Let him prepare you further. He has earned your trust by speaking daily to you of your father and your brother and yourself, capital S. Footnote 201, this refers to him speaking to you in your practice periods and you hearing his message, which is the intended result of all the training the workbook has provided 
in how to listen for guidance. He will continue. Now you walk with him as certain as is he of where you go, as sure as he of how you should proceed, as confident as he is of the goal and of your safe arrival in the end. The end is certain and the means as well. To this we say Amen. We will be told exactly what God wills for us each time there is a choice to make. And he will speak for God and for yourself, thus making sure that hell will claim you not, and that each choice you make brings heaven nearer to your reach. And so we walk with him from this time on, and turn to him for guidance and for peace and sure direction. Joy attends our way, for we go homeward to an open door, which God has held unclosed to welcome us. We trust our ways to him and say, Amen. In peace we will continue in his way and trust all things to him. In confidence we await his answers as we ask his will for everything we do. He loves God's Son as we would love him and he teaches us how to behold him through his eyes and love him as he does. You do not walk alone. God's angels hover close and all about. His love surrounds you, and of this be sure, that I will never leave you comfortless. Footnote 202, John 14:18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. This comes from what is known as the Farewell Discourse in John 14:17. Turning to Robert Perry's commentary on the epilogue. The epilogue echoes two of the themes of this final lesson, following the Holy Spirit as our teacher and friend on the path, and the certainty of reaching the end of the path successfully. Your friend goes with you. You are not alone. You are as certain of arriving home as is the pathway of the sun laid down before it rises. Indeed, your pathway is more certain still. Today I will discuss the theme of following and tomorrow the certainty of arriving home. The epilogue makes it clear that even when we complete the workbook and have achieved the purpose it sets for us, having developed a daily habit of giving our lives over to the direction of the Holy Spirit, we have only begun our journey and there is more to go. The path ahead may yet seem long. There will yet be difficulties along the way. Why else would Jesus emphasize the certainty of the ending unless we believed we still have reason to doubt? We are told this course is a beginning, not an end. We can't expect troubles and problems. We will still be going through lessons, although not, a, not the specific ones of the workbook. Efforts will be required. We will experience difficulty and will still have times in which we think that pain is real. We are still on the way to heaven, but not there yet. We still need guidance. So there must be obstacles or a path that at times seems unclear. We are still on the road towards home. We will continue in his way. Jesus says he will never leave us without comfort, so comfort will still be needed. I am pointing out all the indications that a major portion of our journey is still ahead because we are so easily inclined to think otherwise. We get impatient and want the journey to be over. The positive themes of this epilogue are designed to counteract the discouragement that may come over us when we realize that there is still a long way to go. First, we have a friend who goes with us. A friend. Has my experience with the workbook taught me that? The Holy Spirit is my friend. Perhaps for some of us that friend has personalized as Jesus. And, and that mine, mine has, I can say that. Mine has, and I had a hard time with that, being, being raised Catholic. Um, so it's taken 
taken a while <laughs> to even be okay with that. Has my interaction with him been enough that he has earned my trust by speaking daily to you of your father and your brother and yourself? There are such wonderful promises given to us here of his helpfulness. We cannot call upon him in vain. He has the answers for everything we might ask, and he won't withhold them. All we need to do is ask. He speaks to us of what we really want and really need. He will direct your efforts, telling you exactly what to do, how to direct your mind, and when to come to him in silence, asking for his sure direction and his certain word. We do not need to worry about the length or complexity of our journey. We have a guide. The workbook is not the journey. It is a training camp that prepares us for it, introduces us to our guide, and teaches us to trust our guide. By doing the workbook, by doing the workbook we have learned how reliable and knowledgeable he is. Now we are ready to set out on the journey itself, walking with him in confidence that he knows how to bring us home. And before I lead us into meditation, um, I just want to say that I will be reading the manual for teachers. I'm not going to rush through it. I think I will publish three paragraphs a day and comment on it as I am inspired to do so, if I'm inspired to do so. But um, I'm, I myself am not releasing the lessons next year again. I have two years worth on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in going through the lessons with me again, please, with the commentary by Alan Watson and Robert Perry, please go ahead and Google it because they are all on my YouTube channel. But I am going to be doing the lessons for myself <coughs> because I feel I need to do that this year. And then I'll be reading the text, ACIM Read With Me. I will continue reading the text with the Course Companions group and Robert Perry's commentary. And then I will be reading two paragraphs a day of Volume 3 Manual for Teachers starting in January when the lessons are over. Thank you so much for joining with me, and we are now going to lead into the meditation. I love you. Thank you for joining with me for the meditation. This holy instant would I give to you, be you in charge, for I would follow you certain that your direction brings me peace. And if I need a word to help me, he will give it to me. If I need a thought, that he will also give. And if I need but stillness and a tranquil, open mind, these are the gifts I will receive of him. He is in charge by my request, and he will hear and answer me, because he speaks for God, my Father, and his Holy Son.
instant would I give to you, be you in charge, for I would follow you certain that your direction brings me peace. And if I need a word to help me, he will give it to me. If I need a thought, that will he also give. And if I need but stillness and a tranquil open mind, these are the gifts I will receive of him. He is in my charge by my request, and he will hear and answer me, because he speaks for God my Father and his Holy Son. I love you. Thank you for joining with me.